Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on Wednesday, November 9th here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we are going to go through our daily lectionary text for today, have a little conversation about it, and see what the Lord might be doing um, in our lives and uh, around. And there's a lot going on, so let's go ahead and open the word of prayer. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, gracious Lord, we are thankful to you because you have given us yourself through your son, Jesus Christ, that we could have life eternally with him, uh, not just to look forward to life eternally with him, but to experience um, elements of that here and now. I pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we read your word today and help us to understand better what you are saying to us, that our lives might be uh, increasingly transformed into uh, the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time, and we pray these things in your name, Jesus. We're going to start today with Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills, he gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who's, who hope in his steadfast love. Our Hebrew uh, prophet reading today, sorry, actually comes from Joel chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts, and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. In response to his people, the Lord said, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a mockery among the nations. And from Revelation today, we'll read chapter 19, verses 11 through 21. Then I saw, the he saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name inscribed that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, wearing fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, 
and he will rule them with the rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly in midheaven, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of the mighty, the flesh of horses and their riders, flesh of all, both free and slave, both small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against the rider on the horse and against his army. And the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed in its presence the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were killed by the sword of the rider on the horse, and the sword that came from his mouth, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh." Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth, Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within its citadels, God has shown himself a sure defense. Then the kings assembled, they came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to flight, trembling took hold of them there pained as of a woman in labor, as when an east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, which God establishes forever. We ponder your steadfast love, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your name, O God, like your praise, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with the victory. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Walk about Zion, go all around it, count its towers, consider well its ramparts, go through its citadels that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. He will be our guide forever. And our final psalm today is Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine, us, shine on us, O Lord. You have put more gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Wow, gosh, Revelation, Joel, even the uh, 
some of the Psalms that we were reading. Um, one of the things, you know, Natalie and I don't always read these ahead of time. Sometimes we glance over them just to look at some things, but sometimes you get kind of raw first reaction, and I think that's what you're getting a little bit today. It's like, okay, so uh, the the uh, the gospel, I mean, the the prophet Joel, uh, he, if if you've been reading along, he's been talking about how uh, God is sending a plague of locusts that's coming to. Uh, destroy the crops of the of the Israelites, and how there's this um, this confidence and this faith that the people have put into their production, into their produce, and God's saying, you know what, what's going to happen if all of this is stripped away because of the unrighteousness of the people? They've been putting more confidence in their things than they have been putting into God, and so this image um, of the locusts coming and destroying all of these things are, um, as we know with most of the prophets, there's a, uh, there's a contextual fulfillment of, and there's also a future uh, looking forward, some fulfillment that's going to occur in the future. And Joel is one of these prophets that we know gets quoted by Peter at, the, um, at Pentecost when uh, the Holy Spirit comes upon the, uh, the disciples and they are able to preach the gospel message in tongues that are understood by all. And this is the uh, example that Peter gives. This is what's happening. It was what was spoken of by the prophet Joel, right. that God was going to send his spirit, that, uh, that people would prophesy, that you know, the old men would see visions and the young people dream dreams and uh, you know, men and women, you know, servant girls, all these kind of things. But this passage that we read today from Joel chapter 2, um, talking about how God wants for people to return to him, how there is this, um, you know, that, that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. How many times have we heard that all throughout right. scripture? You know, the, the Psalms preach it, the prophets preach it, Moses talks about it, all of the, all of the heroes of faith are reminding the people that God is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. He repents from punishing. And so this is again a call for the people to turn back to God that he can re renew again that redemptive cycle with them um, and how great it is that when the people do repent when they cry out that the, those lovely uh, images about call all the people to the fast the solemn assembly the old and the young the children even the infants um, the bridegroom and the bride, you know, let everybody come back before the Lord and then let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep and make intercession on behalf of the people. And then, then what is God's response? God actually says, okay, you know what? I'm going to restore to you uh, those, those things that you need. Um, and he does. And Again, this isn't as if God is the cosmic vending machine, just right. do the right things, put the right coin in the right slot, say the right prayer, and then God will respond the, you know, the, the way. God is not a mechanistic God at all. He is a personal God. Uh, even the word that he uses, he became uh, jealous for his land. That's, uh, that's not meant as, oh, you know, somebody else has taken something of mine. No, he knows he owns it already. Right. You know, God has control over all of these things. So it's just, I am going to use the land for its intended purpose. It's supposed to be, it's meant to be a blessing for the people um, when we are in a good relationship with one another. And so um, that, uh, what we read in um, Joel and what we read in Luke, I think, again, with the idea of forgiveness, uh, how the Lord searches after the one, leaving the 99 behind, just so there is more rejoicing in heaven. Uh, again, Luke reminds us of why is he telling this parable, and you've got the religious leaders that are mad that Jesus is hanging out with sinners, and it's like, you don't get it, do you? Once again, I'm going to have to remind you, this is what God's all about, right. going out and getting the people that are lost to be found. Right. Yeah. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the lost, and he tells us that. And so, um, well, and, and back to what you were saying about in, in the Joel in the Joel passage that it's you know he's not this 
vending machine. It's not you say the right thing, you do the right thing. When you look there, right there in that verse 12, yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all of your heart. And so with that, and when we look at that, you know, we, we constantly talk about that redemptive cycle and um, God does continually welcome us back in and, and does, you know, his people, Old Testament, but he also offers that to us as well. And he relents on that punishment, but it's not because we said the right thing or we did the right, it's because there was a change of heart. It's he sees the heart, he, you know, his, um, I believe it's, one of the Psalms I read today, you know, his, well, it's Psalm 147 that we read every week, you know, his understanding is beyond measure. He understands and he sees that change. He sees that transition as, and as we come to him with humble hearts, as we come to him repenting, he sees that, he knows the heart. And with that, then we are then pulled back into that fold until we screw up again. Right, and then the redemptive cycle has to start, start again. again. It is, in fact, a cycle. <laughs> right. It's, and God is ever present in that yes. cycle. That is the thing. That is the right. constant. That is the, um, you know, I think sometimes when people feel like they are far from God, they seem to think somehow that he has walked away when, in fact, it's us that has stepped back or turned mm. or, or whatever, you know, imagery you want to use there. But... God is that constant that's there, mm -hmm. and He is always there with open arms, right. waiting to rejoice and celebrate as we come back. He's he, He's not leaving, right? And and even in those instances where we might feel as if God is far away, I think that there are many times that God allows us to go through difficult times in order that we would cry out to Him even more. Right. That His seeming absence. Is, is an opportunity for us to uh, increase our faith and our depth of relationship with Him. Because how easy is it for all of us when things are going great, actually, um, you know, we can, we can throw up a perfunctory praise, oh, thanks God for all the great blessings that you've provided. But would we be saying, thanks God for all the great blessings you've provided if we feel somehow lacking? Like if we right. feel, oh man, things aren't as good as I want them to be, Therefore, I'm not going to be as prolific with my praise. I'm just going to be all whatever. So uh, as, as humans, I think we have that tendency to always be tempted towards the blessings rather than the one who blesses. Right. And so God knows our hearts better than we do. And I think this is where... Uh, Joel speaking of the gracious and merciful character of God, like you were saying, Natalie, that God is always the same. Right. His character traits of compassion and generosity and mercy, they're always there. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, what, what is changeable is our own hearts right. and how we are sometimes very appreciative and sometimes not so much. Sometimes we can feel very, very close to God and sometimes not so much. Um, right. But yeah, but you know, in, in the freedom that God gives us, I think that's where uh, the challenge lies because we know that when we come back to him, he, he loves and forgives. Um, right. Yeah. And I know that you and I have spoken about this. Um, I don't know that we've spoken about it in this setting, but you know, those, those difficult moments, those difficult times, those are the moments that I feel like have the most um, transformative power in our lives. Mm -hmm. Those, when we do go through difficult times, those are the things that do have such an impact and a change and a transformation within us. Um, if everything's, you know, going along pretty well, there's not a whole lot of reason to change what we're doing or to right. look at things. And sometimes those difficult times, difficult moments, those, um, you know, whatever it is that we're facing, those are the things that are going to truly shape who we are and, mm. and shape that relationship with Christ. So we, we talk regularly about this redemptive cycle and how it seems then uh, it's, it's possible to us, for us to think that uh, that is the fullness of the plan. And I think this is why it's important for us to have that revelation reading where 
humans throughout history do seemingly go in these cycles, but we know that all of creation is moving from a beginning point towards a final point, that, that we are not trapped in some infinitely recurring right. Um, cycle, right. but we actually have a purpose uh, here and now within our own lives. Now, within our lives, we can go through cycles, but our right. lives are progressing. Right. Uh, Christians believe that, uh, that we are um, uniquely created, uh, uh, known by God, individuals in God's image, um, valuable, precious, uh, uh, again, unique. And there's never going to be another Natalie. There's never going to be another Joel. Right. And so from birth until death, it's a singular life to live. We do go through cycles um, in our lives, like we do go through seasons. Every year we have spring to summer to fall to winter back to spring. Uh, in our lives there are times that we are close to God, times that we are far from God, but we are moving in a singular direction. And so Revelation really reminds us of that, that there is a time that is coming when Jesus is going to return to this earth and uh, and history will reach its full intended purpose. There is an end, to use a Greek theological term, there is a telos, a, a, uh, uh, a purpose, a conclusion, a completeness that God is bringing so that we are not trapped in some infinitely recurring uh, reincarnation cycle. We are looking forward to a resurrection that there is going to be in heaven at some point a unique Natalie that will be known as Natalie, known by Jesus, fully redeemed, fully uh, sanctified, um, and, and in the presence of God forever. And so those who have faith in Christ, when we look at the Revelation passages and we see some of these kind of scary images of of uh, the beast and uh, the dragon and all of these different apocalyptic literature that is sometimes difficult to understand. As Christians, we should actually read this and say, we can rejoice that the purpose is being satisfied, that Jesus is coming, the word of God on his horse, uh, again, apocalyptic literature, coming to wage war finally and defeat finally, um, right. the forces of evil, those things that tempt us or pull us away or seek to influence us in negative ways, all that's going to be taken care of. God is going to come uh, through Jesus Christ and set all things to right. And so while we go through periods of change and growth, um, God has a plan. God has a plan for this world. God has a plan uh, for each person individually. God has a plan for your children. God has a plan for you in the midst of your jobs or your searching for a job or your retirement, your, for your education. All of these things have a purpose, have a plan. And the question is, how do we live into the story of not just God's cycles of redemption, but right. God's ultimate plan go into the future? Right. I, okay. Um, and so, yeah. So, um, you know, don't don't be frightened of the Revelation readings, or don't be too put off by uh, some of the difficult things we read in the prophets. But but trust uh, that God is doing great things um, for His uh, for His glory, for our um, ultimate benefit, and uh, for their intended purpose. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say other than you know the righteous are. Uh, given uh, great blessings and the wickedness of, of everything is, is finally and completely destroyed. So, yeah. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, no. No? I okay. Think, okay, I'm good. Okay, well, I'm, I'm pretty good too. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the, uh, the, the Psalm 4, the last one that we read today. It's just, uh, I, I love how the, the psalmist um, uh, it's, it's that great um, question and answer sort of thing that we are always struggling with. And so if the Lord has put something on your heart and you are disturbed by it or, uh, you know, ponder those things, find a quiet place to just uh, cry out to God uh, 
and you know don't you know don't you know f go off and on the deep end or something right. like whoa something kind of freaked me out you know it's just like you know what ponder it God will give you God will give you the answer uh, but continue to speak truth continue to be uh, aware of God's graciousness and and remember that uh, the, the goodness and the gladness that he brings is superior to anything else going on so yeah well, would you like to close us in prayer? I'd be happy to. Okay, great. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time together and thank you for your words to us today. And thank you that you are this all powerful, worthy of um, praise, worthy of worship. God that loves each and every one of us and that you, um, you do have each one of us called for a purpose and you know each of us individually and let us put our trust in you that the, your plans are in place and that your plans will come to fulfillment in um, in your timing and and we just ask these things in Jesus name amen amen all right um what we say today was again the 11th the 9th the night. The night. <laughs> right. Well, we got a lot going on this week, and we were at staff meeting just talking about the various things that are coming up. Um, and so there's a lot of busy things going on over these next couple of weeks. So if we don't actually hit a midweek connection, um, it's, I think we're going to intend to. But yeah, I think that there are times okay. that we might not be able to get one out. Uh, but just please know that... Um, if you've got any questions or concerns, you know, please do call the church. We'd be happy to listen to your concerns and to pray with you. But keep reading your daily lectionary and continue to ask that God would reveal to you that which you need for the day. And, uh, and try to practice good faithfulness and trust that God will pick you up when you fall and forgive you when you fail. Uh, but really does love you and want what's best for you. So looking forward to the next chance we have to worship together. But thanks, Natalie, for um, participating with us today. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.